Violet Evergarden manages to tell a most too compelling story in just 13 episodes. In just 13 episodes, we see a full character arc of the main protagonist. How Violet goes from just being a mostly emotionless soldier made only for serving and accepting orders in the first episode to understanding the complexity of human feelings and emotions. In the first episode, Violet cannot exist without taking orders, and in the last one she refuses to accept any more orders and wants to live freely for herself. What attracted me to the show is that it is not based on a graphic novel. The only source material is a light novel by the same name, which was written by Kana Akatsuki. The novel never had an official English translation, though. Plus, as I already said, Violet Evergarden has only 13 episodes, plus an OVA episode and the movie, but in this video we say I am focusing solely on the series. I sure do love when shows can be short and self-sufficient at the same time. The biggest factor that stops me, if I'm being completely honest, from actually getting into anime is sheer volume of content. Not just that of course, but volume is absolutely the biggest reason. Many great shows usually contain over 100 episodes. That's why I was so glad when I found Violet Evergarden. This show is Violet's story. She is the only character who appears in each and every episode. Each episode contains its own interesting story and a set of characters that help Violet to grow as a person. At the very beginning, Violet is a soldier without any feelings or emotions on her own, whose whole existence is just focused around taking orders from her commander, who happens to be a major named Gilbert. She is a perfect war machine. She loses her hands trying to save Major Gilbert, but he dies nonetheless. But before he dies, he tells Violet that he loves her. So Violet is trying to figure out what this phrase means. For this exact reason, she becomes an auto memoir doll, whose job is concentrated around ghost writing, which is writing letters for other people who, for some reason, cannot write themselves. Each episode will explore a brand new story. Violet Evergarden can be seen as an anthology to a certain extent, even though it is probably technically not correct to call Violet Evergarden an anthology. We see how Violet changes from episode to episode as she learns new aspects of human emotions and human feelings. In the first episodes, Violet can't write the letter because she fundamentally doesn't understand the nuances of human relationship. All her letters come out as straightforward reports, like a soldier reporting to their commander. But in the end she is capable of writing letters that can literally make people cry. The main problem with the show is that most of the episodes are just really boring to watch. The pace is really slow. The show is meditative and gives viewers enough time to focus on and enjoy every detail of animation and music. The first half of the show genuinely bored me. But there are two episodes that I loved very much. Episode 7 in which Wyatt helps a playwright to finish his play and episode 10 where Wyatt helps a dying mother to write letters to her daughter. This one is legit heartbreaking and honestly feels like something that Hayao Miyazaki would write. Though most episodes try way too hard to squeeze a tear out of viewers. With some people it definitely worked, though not with me. I mentioned before that this show is really slow and meditative. It spends a lot of time showcasing its nearly perfect animation and music. I must say the animation looks very impressive. Character design is good enough, the only thing I didn't like was Violet's hairstyle, because I think her hairstyle is really uncomfortable, especially for a soldier. But that's just a minor complaint. Overall the character design is pretty decent. 
I would also love to talk a bit about the soundtrack. It's such a pleasant mix of classical composed melodies that perfectly suits the setting, which is based on Europe at the turn of the 20th century. But I noticed that despite having a rich arrangement, only two light motifs are dominant across the series, which is weird considering how many different compositions were written for the show. By the way, the music is written by Ivan Cole, who is an American-born classical composer who lives and works in Japan. One more thing that I appreciate about Wild at Evergarden is the almost complete absence of absurd fan service that unfortunately plagues the medium. I assume that it is because the show is based on a white novel instead of manga. While at Evergarden is, in my opinion, how Japanese animation should look like. Without all the frankly disturbing fan pandering and objectification of women to attract male audience. Unfortunately, sometimes objectification is the only way for a bad show to actually attract an audience and not fail, since despite being cheap, every project is still a lot of hard work by many different people. And same with manga. Judging by the sheer amount of shows that we receive each year, this strategy actually works, mostly. However, why whatever garden isn't completely devoid of disturbing stuff. In the fourth episode, Wyatt helps a 14-year-old Princess Charlotte marry a prince who is literally 10 years older than her. It is plausible since the setting is based on Europe over a century ago, but still feels not quite right. Especially considering that the princess didn't even want to marry a man who is 10 years older than her. But it's not like she had any choice, of course, the marriage was arranged. What makes the situation even worse is that Prince met Charlotte at her birthday when she was just 10 years old. And don't even try to excuse this by the made up cultural difference between the West and the East. Apart from that, the show is mostly fine, even though it lacks interesting female characters, apart from Violet herself. But all in all, the show is pretty good. It is an emotional and very beautiful hero's journey, in a way. Making this video reminded me of something. Three months ago I released a video talking about the problems that western animation faces. I promised to make a similar video, but with Japanese animation. Making a video about why whatever garden reminded me of the issues that Japanese industry faces, that it is still an interesting thing to discuss. Stay on this channel if you would like more videos like this on animation and much more.